Okay, shall we start? I guess. Okay, so welcome. Welcome to our annual SPAN conference. It's a great pleasure to meet you again. And I think this, this, these are really important words to meet you again in person and not just online. I think that's, that's a step forward looking back to the last two years where we all have had all these online meetings every day from the early beginning until the night sitting in front of the computer and having all these online meetings. On the other side, it was very comfortable because then in an online meeting, you can wear a bath trousers or bath or no, and nobody can see it. Or you can have a glass of wine beside your screen and no one can see it. That's a little bit different. So, but we are really happy to be back now at the SPAN conference and uh, just looking back to the history um, and people who had been here from the very early beginning, I think we have seen SPAN conferences with 100 people, 100 within the room. And now we are starting back with 27, so maybe next year we have 60 and then the year after in 2024, maybe we have 100. But on the other side, we also have some colleagues in the online world. So welcome also to our colleagues at the on online world. So we have a hybrid format presenting within the room, but also getting presentations from the online world and having hopefully some discussions also with our colleagues uh, in the online world. Just to introduce myself, my name is Markus Wartenberg and I'm the chair of Sarcoma Patients Euronet, but also the co-chair of the German organization called the German Sarcoma Foundation. And maybe you have heard in the history, we used the term das Lebenshaus, that was a different organization. And round about three, two and a half years ago, we changed the organization from a pure patient organization, das Lebenshaus, to the German Sarcoma Foundation. And this is a combined organization with our medical experts. So where we are running one organization together with medical experts, sarcoma experts, and patients in one organization here in Germany. So we, we are just making experience with this. So welcome to our meeting. And as I mentioned before, it's so great to see many people really back in the room and have time within the meeting, but also have time in coffee breaks, but also during dinner. So that's really a great, great opportunity. So currently, as you know, Sarcoma Patients Unit has around about 55 member organizations. And we also will talk about some changes during this afternoon where we now move the organization in the future just from a European organization to a global organization. That will be the part of our AGM this afternoon. And the welcome comes also together with my friend and colleague here, over here, Gerard from the Netherlands, maybe you all know him. And we are running together the organization with a wonderful team. So it's also welcome on behalf of the team, this is the board. Part of the board is an elected board by the members and part of the board are appointed board members from the other board members so that we have a group of around about 14 people together with our staff running the organization. And just as a welcome on behalf of the team, I would like to introduce you two persons with they are in the room to welcome you on behalf of the, of the board. So one is our colleague Vandana from India and Vandana is over here. And just say a short, short words. Good afternoon to each one of you and uh, happy welcome to all of you who are here and also on online. I'm Vandana Gupta, I'm from India and the organization that I represent is VCARE Foundation. We also have a group for uh, sarcoma patients and it's called Spandan. It was set up almost about 10 years back and um, Marcus had been very kind to come to Mumbai to help us set it up. So we have patients who have recovered and who are on treatment 
on, uh, of sarcomas and they interact with each other and they learn from each other's experience. So it's a great feeling to know that we can all work together. And then subsequently, I was asked to join um, the Spain um, group, which has been a great platform for learning. And then last year, I was appointed as a board member. So thank you very much for this honor. And I hope we can work together and do much more than what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Madonna. <laughs> and the second representative of the board is our colleague, colleague um, Denise. And uh, maybe both or three people in the room, they will get an award for the longest flight to this okay. conference. She's coming from the US, the other colleagues are coming from India, so maybe we should give them an extra award to take this long journey on. Well, I can say that it is truly my pleasure to be here and to be with all of you in the room and as well as those of you who are online. Um, as Marcus said, I'm uh, Denise Rinke, I'm from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan in the United States and by way of background, I'm a sarcoma nurse practitioner. I'm also the past CEO and president of SARC, which is a nonprofit research consortium for sarcoma research in the United States. I'm also a founder of the Sarcoma Coalition, which is a nascent organization trying to bring together the patient advocacy groups, the sarcoma patient advocacy groups in the United States. And I'm also an appointed member of the uh, board of SPAN. And so I know there are several uh, organizations from the US sarcoma advocacy groups that are members of SPAN, as well as the uh, Sarcoma Coalition is a member. And so uh, I know we are so delighted to be able to be part of this international initiative to bring our voices together. So I wish you all a productive meeting, and I look forward to learning so much from all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. <clears throat> and just looking now to the screen, the other people from the board who, who are in the room, I already introduced briefly Gerard, and then we have Kai, he is also a board member for many years now, and also Annika, who is also from the board, and all the other board members are connected in the online world so far. So greetings from the room to our board colleagues in the online sphere or online area. Okay. So just welcome to Frankfurt, maybe some information, some facts about Frankfurt. Frankfurt is a very, very interesting city. And maybe just uh, start with some facts. So Frankfurt has around about 700,000 inhabitants. This makes Frankfurt around about the fifth biggest city in German, Germany. What is the biggest city in Germany? Berlin. Berlin. And then followed by Munich. <laughs> okay, so Berlin, and then this is uh, the, the, the area around Frankfurt is called the Rhine-Main Metropolitan Region, and you can see there are 3.8 million people in this region, so this is really a very important and big region. And the region is a very, a very dyna dynamic economic center with a very long tradition. Tradition in the financial business, so Frankfurt is very famous for the financial business and for the stock exchange, but also for trade and fair. So we have a big fair here in, in, in Germany or in Frankfurt, where a lot of uh, trades of trade fairs are located. For example, maybe you have heard about the International Book Fair that normally has taken place in previous years here in Frankfurt, but also the ERR, this is the automotive in, uh, exhibition that really took place for many, many years here in Germany. We have 196 banks, unbelievable. That's very often Frankfurt is called not only Frankfurt, but Bankfurt, because of all these banks here in, uh, in, in Frankfurt. We have around about 75,000 people working here in finance and insurance. That's quite a huge number. So we are talking about 500,000, nearly 500,000 jobs here in Frankfurt. That's just really a huge number of jobs. That means a lot of traffic in the morning and in the evening by getting into Frankfurt and getting out of Frankfurt from the areas around. We have this national and international transport hub. It's not just uh, by the airport, but also train and traffic. So this is really one of the, tr uh, uh, the, the, the transport hubs here in Germany. And the Frankfurt Airport is one of the examples with round about 460,000 flight movements per year, round about 61 million travelers. And what I 
didn't know before this presentation is about 67 kilometers of baggage system. Unbelievable. In one place, in one airport, 67 kilometers of baggage claim. Unbelievable. That's really, really strange. And we have a lot of tourists pass through Frankfurt every day. And you so the other fact is Frankfurt has 14 of the 15 tallest buildings in Germany. And this is also why many people call Frankfurt Manhattan compared to Manhattan with all these towers. They call it Manhattan because the river is the mine, Manhattan. That's the, that's the combination. And at the, at the same time, because it's, it's a big city with a lot of skyscrapers and a lot of buildings, but on the other side, Frankfurt is really a green city. So we have around about 50% is of the city area is green and really open space. So we have very nice parks and something like a green belt around the city. So it's quite very, very interesting. On one side, you have the city. On the other side, you have really a lot of green space. And then we come to food, very special food here in Frankfurt. So one is about the hot dog. It's called the Frankfurter. I think you have heard a lot about this. So this is one part, but there are also some other issues or some other very traditional food. And maybe you have the opportunity during the next days to taste it. So one is about Rippchen mit Kraut. That's a hot cured cuttle with sauerkraut. That's very famous for this area. And the next one is, is, is uh, very funny. And this is called Handkäse mit Musik, means hand cheese with music. And what music means is something like acid and onions. So it's a special receipt around uh, the, this cheese. And this is a special sour milk cheese. So maybe you want to try it during the next days. But we also have a very Frankfurter green sauce. This is also very specific. It's a sauce of made of herbs, different seven or eight different herbs. So and you can uh, eat it with potatoes and different other issues. So it's very traditional here, but also a drink, it's called apple wine. That's also very, very famous for this whole area. And football is also very famous here in Germany because it's called Eintracht Frankfurt. And you know that Eintracht Frankfurt just won the European Cup uh, just a few weeks ago. And also the DFB, that's the German Football Association, they are also located here in Frankfurt. So Frankfurt is a very sportive city. So on the next weekend, we will have the European uh, Championship of Triathlon here in Frankfurt. So there are a lot of activities in sports. So just a few facts about the history. Frankfurt means Frankfurt, the word Frankfurt means Fort of the Frank Franks. That means the Franks are uh, uh, something like people in the history, the Franks. And they founded Frankfurt just close the river. And fort means to pass the river on a very um, not so deep. So you have a very flat part within the river where you can have had the opportunity to cross the river. That means uh, the fort of the Franks. The oldest part is the cathedral hill. And you can see it over here. That's just laser. Laser doesn't work. So that's over here. That's very famous for Frankfurt, it's the Römerberg. So it's not so far from here, so you can, it's just in walking distance to see the Römerberg. It has around about 1200 years of uh, very eventful history. And then Frankfurt was very famous for crowning the emperors and kings in Germany. So Frankfurt was really a, 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 a very central and powerful area uh, in, the, in, a, in the median or middle age. Um, the stock exchange is also very old, founded somewhere in the 1600s, and then Goethe was born. You have, everyone has heard about Goethe, a very important um, poem or a very important person here in Frankfurt. And this is also very important for Germany, was the first democratic constitution of Germany passed here in the so-called Paulskirche. Uh, you can also see the Paulskirche here. It's not so far away from this. Then we have seen extensive destruction in World War II. Here you see the Römer, and that was the Römer after the World War. And so they built up the whole city. And this is also very famous. Many people don't know this. Um, almost Frankfurt become the federal city of Germany, the capital. 
but then there was something like a selection process and finally the winner was born and so the federal uh, s the federal uh, capital was born and then the federal capital as you all know moved to Berlin uh, some years ago but um, it was a hard race otherwise maybe Frankfurt had been the capital so we just talked about Johann Wolfgang Goethe and many of you maybe have read some stories and some poems, some literature from Goethe in at, at, your, at school, I don't know, maybe. And uh, he was born in Frankfurt and also raised in Frankfurt and then he lived a long time also in Weimar, but he also did a lot of uh, travels to Italy and different areas, so he was very keen to travel and to, to write some travel reports from his journeys and something like this. Originally he was a lawyer, an advocate, and he also in between was a minister, so he has a very, very uh, positive career, but his main job was to write poetry, drama, epics, but also some autobiographical art, uh, li uh, letters, literature theory, as well as scientific writing, so he was very famous in doing a lot of writing in different ways of writing. And well known are these issues like Götz von Berlichingen, you have maybe heard of this, but also Die Leiden des Jungen Wörters. I think many of you have heard about Faust as one of the, uh, his main issues, Ephigene and so on. His works fill today around about 150 books, so he did a lot of work during this, this way in writing. And he also did countless quotes are from Goethe, I think 100, 200, there are a lot of quotes around from Goethe. And I just to now to switch over to our patient advocacy role, I try to find some motivational quotes from Goethe that really fit in our world of patient advocacy. If you don't do anything for others, you don't do anything for yourself. You, you, you can just sweep it around. If you do things for others, you do something for yourself. And many of patient advocates, they realize this, they do this, they get this feeling if they do things for others, they are doing something for themselves, maybe also coping with their disease. So this is one part. Whatever you do, or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness means courage has genius, power and magic in it. This is also important. And I think around about 150 years later, there was another famous person who brought this very short. And his name was Walt Disney. And Walt Disney mentioned, if you can dream it, you can do it. This is more or less the same way. So if you have an idea, if you really have a, have a dream, you can realize it, you can do it. And then one waits for the times to change, the other grabs them vigorously and acts. So it's about action and action in patient advocacy is extremely important. You can wait until things change or you can try to move it and really can try to change it. And the last one, I love this, and this is you can also build something beautiful out of stones that are placed in your way. So it is always the question how to handle the situation. You always can see the negative things or you can maybe stopped by some negative things or maybe you can try to find solutions and really try moving. These are some quotes who really fit into, into our advocacy world. So I think these are the two C words and I think we don't want to spend so much time uh, talking about Corona or COVID anymore, but this has dominated our work and our private life during the last two and a half years. And I'm still, we are not back in normality, so we will still be, uh, have some issues with this. And a second issue, and you all realize this, is now the war and not so far away from here, so the, the Ukrainian, Ukrainian war, this will also affect our lives, it already has affected our lives, but it will still affect our lives within the next years, whether you talk about the energy or whatever you talk, it, it, this will be really a challenge uh, within the next year, years, affecting also our, our lives. So when we talk about the SPAN annual conference, this is, and this is traditionally now for many, many conferences, 
there are some issues that are very important. So it's about medical updates within these conferences. So we have usually experts coming to this conference directly in person or maybe during the next days online to give us updates, medical updates in the different areas, soft tissue, bone, gist, desmoids, so that we can learn more about the issues. Best practice. So it's about sharing best practice in treatment. It's about exchange with top experts and pharma colleagues. It's about patient advocacy. It's about patient support. It's about pay capacity building. So to learn more for, me, for your own organization, how you can strengthen your organization, how can you, you develop your organization fur further on. It's about projects and collaboration, inspiration. It's also under about understanding how different the world is, because that's also what we learned during the last years that not the US way is the right way and not the German way is the right way or the Western world is the right, right way. The world is so different and every region needs to find specific ways to their specific culture and their specific situation. And what this conference is also about, it's about fun, friendship and fun because we know each other now for many, many years and uh, Vandana mentioned this already. We spend some time in the meantime in India. We have learned so much from our Indian colleagues and we have spent so much time in India in the meantime. So it's, it's fantastic about really learning and working together, but also with different other areas, with our Swiss colleagues and different other areas. So that's really fantastic. So we learned to live with the situation now, with our online situation or virtual meetings. The advantage is it is efficient. You have no travel time. Maybe you have more participants when you do this online, but you are missing a very important point, And this is the personal exchange. The personal exchange, not within the meeting room, but also in the coffee break or during dinner or whatever to have really personal exchange to learn from each other, maybe have a good idea maybe together and run this good or plan this good idea forward to a project. Um, so this, this is very important and this can't be replaced by a virtual meeting. That's not possible. So we need to come back to face-to-face -face meetings within the next or two or three years. So we will see. But we will again make the best of this out of the situation in 2022. The challenge is always if you run a global meeting or a global organization, the challenge is always time zones. So we have time differences. And then some house and Zoom keating notes. Maybe, Michi, would you like to argue because you put this together? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have the coffee breaks. They are in the foyer. You already have seen the foyer over here. So then dinner on Friday is in the hotel restaurants downstairs where you also have had lunch. Dinner on Saturday will be external at Mein Nizza. We will, I think, explain this a little bit later, where to go and how to go and always uh, these issues. So the meeting point will be at tomorrow evening at uh, the lobby. And then, and this is very important, not just looking to the watch is uh, to keep on time. This is important for our meeting here, but also for our only online colleagues that we try really to keep on time with our present presentations. So Zoom key to be keeping notes, I think our online colleagues are very well <laughs> experienced in the meantime with all the Zoom stuff and all the issues. So I don't think we have to go to the details. I think this is always the same story. It is important <coughs> that we also can have a discussion. And discussion is always complicated if you have hybrid meeting if you have people in the room and people online. So we need something like a translator. That means if questions are coming up or if contributions are coming up, we have uh, Michi and Kathleen and uh, Maria who will um, help us getting the information into the room. We will also be able then to share the screen, to, to share our colleagues on the screen. So hopefully that we will have a little bit of discussion and not just uh, consuming information. So we'll see. Okay, 
last but not least, just a big thank you to our external and internal speakers. That means <coughs> mainly we will have a lot of presentations, online presentations, but also some of the presentations will be here. Thank you also to our funders, means to our colleagues from <coughs> pharma and from healthcare industry. As you know, we received from the companies uh, so-called sustaining partnerships. That means they, they are supporting Sarcoma Patients Euronet as an organization. Sometimes we also do some project funding. Thank you also to Michi, Katrin and Maria who are really now in the back to help us with all the issues. And also thank you very much for your really <coughs> great contribution just to set this meeting up and to organize everything as usual in the meantime. And thank you also for the technical team over here for helping us through this during the next three days.